Hi there, GMC owners. Today in your 2012 GMC Sierra 2500, we're going to be taking a look and show you how to install B&W's underbed gooseneck hitch system. And this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. The entire rail system is installed underneath the bed, so that way it doesn't take up any of your truck bed space. When you're using it, you have your goose ball here so you can hook up, but if you're wanting full truck bed access, the goose ball can be flipped over and now you've got your full bed back to you just like kind of almost like it was before. There is a little bit of a footprint here, but it really doesn't take up any of your bed space as the safety chain loops and the hitch itself really doesn't stand up much above the actual bed. Your goose ball secures to your hitch with a pin that goes right on through it. That's what you, when you're pulling your release handle, you're pulling that pin out. And if we look at it here, we've got holes in a cross pattern. So no matter which way you drop it down in here, it's gonna line up. You don't have to have it in any specific orientation there. To the outside of our goose ball, we're gonna have our safety chain attachments and they are spring loaded. So that way it keeps it down, sucked up against your bed. So that way when you're not using it, they're not gonna be in your way, getting caught on things. They're gonna be pulled down tight. But when you are ready to use them, you simply just pull it up and you can hook your loops to them. And that way you've got all of your necessary safety precautions. And this hitch features a 7,500 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of our ball and our hitch here. And it also offers a 30,000 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much that it can pull behind it. So it's got some immense weights to it. So they should be able to pull just about any gooseneck trailer that you're planning on hooking it up to. Your handle's located down here on the side. When you're ready to pull your ball out or flip it over or whenever you're wanting to remove it, you'll simply pull your lever, give it a little bit of a twist, just like that, and it should stay out locked out like that. At this point now, our ball's free to be pulled out, flipped over, do whatever we need to do with it. Once we've got it back into place in the position we want, we'll just give it a little twist back the other way and it'll slide back in like that and lock it into place. Now, as far as the installation of this hitch goes, B&W definitely makes a top quality product. The hitch, the brackets and all that, everything flows together and installs very smoothly. Now, that being said, this is a pretty big install. This is something that I would definitely set aside for like a Saturday or a Sunday. You probably wanna give yourself the full day uh, to get this done. It could be done, for, and I would say at the quickest, and maybe at about four hours, but you're really moving. So I would really plan on giving yourself about twice that amount of time, especially if you don't have a, a lift and all these things that we've got here at E-Trailer. One of the things I did not like about this kit was the handle nuts that they came included with. I did have some difficulty getting those bolts to torque down because they wanted to slip on the inside. Uh, we had to kind of remove those and get those back right to get those to work. So just pay attention to those handle nuts. There is kind of a little bit of a blurb in the instructions that talks about uh, preparing those. Definitely follow that to a T and it might not even hurt to uh, bulk it up a little bit more, um, making sure that you've got those tangs holding that bolt properly. We'll begin our installation here at the back of the vehicle by removing our spare tire. So you can grab your spare tire tools out of your truck. If you need some assistance with that, you can refer to the owner's manual that should outline where you'll find your tools and the location. You may or may not have a lock here that prevents you from doing this. Your ignition key is the key that will unlock that if so. This has to get out of the way just to make things easier to work down there. There's also a heat shield that we're gonna have to modify. And with this tire in the way, it makes that pretty difficult. So now we got our tire out of the way. We're gonna take out parts of this heat shield here. This cross beam here just above the axle and the tubular cross beam that's just in front of our exhaust here where it goes over the axle. That's the section we wanna cut out. So we're gonna cut it out from here over to here. We're just gonna use our snips to cut it out. You could also use a cutoff wheel, um, whatever works easiest for you. Just do the same thing here on the other side, and then we can go back and clean it up once we're done. Now that we've got the other side cut off, we can just slide this out of here and discard it. We're not gonna be reusing this section of it. May have to bend it a little bit to get it on out of there. Now there are some rough edges left where we had worked. 
So we can go in with our snips and just clean those up and we'll bend this up kind of out of the way to make it a little bit safer to work around. Next, we're gonna have to cut out the hole for our gooseneck ball to be able to pass through. The measurement is gonna vary depending on the length of your truck bed. So you wanna to refer to your instructions for the appropriate measurement. We're gonna be using the ones for the short bed on this truck because it is a short bed. So I've gone ahead and set our tape measure there. We hooked it at the edge of the bed, not the tailgate, but the bed. And we're just gonna make our mark at the location indicated in our instructions. And then we're just gonna double check now to make sure that it's centered side to side. So now that we've got our location marked, we're gonna take a four inch hole saw and we're gonna cut that out. So now we're gonna go ahead and clean this up, vacuum up all the mess we made, and we'll use some clear coat then to seal up the hole that we had just cut out to prevent any rust or corrosion. We're now on the passenger side. We'll be sliding our rails in above the frame, but the fender liner here is gonna be in the way. So if you look at your instructions, it'll indicate about cutting out a notch in it there. Uh, so we're gonna cut out this area so we can get these slid in. We're just gonna be using our snips once again to do so to allow our rail to pass in. And we can take a file to this once we're done to clean that up. You can also take a razor knife to it to clean it up. So now that we've got that cut, if we check this out here, we can see that our rail still isn't gonna slide in. It's gonna contact on the metal up there as well. So we're also going to have to trim that. So we'll bring our rail back out of the way there. I do recommend you try it at home and see if it'll fit because due to manufacturer variances, it may slide in there without having to trim, but in most cases, you probably are gonna to have to trim like we are here. So we're just gonna take our saw now, we're just gonna zip up, zip up, and then we can either just bend this flat or cut it completely off. So at this point now, you could, if you want, cut it all the way out of there, but it's difficult to get to those angles and stuff, so we're just gonna knock it over flat and that'll probably be good enough for us to get it in there. And we'll recheck our fit. As I'm sliding it in, I'm making sure that the holes are facing towards the rear uh, there, because we want this to kind of hang down with our holes and this flat solid part with no holes is gonna be at the top towards the front. But it looks like it slid right in there. So it looks like we're good to go. Once we've got that one slid in, we're just gonna push it towards the front. And I am gonna hop underneath real quick because when I pushed it there, only pushed the one side. So we're just also gonna push this side here forward just to make sure it's out of the way when we go to slide our next rail in. Now we're back underneath. We've got our center section here. We're gonna raise it into position. We've got an extra set of hands to help us with this. It's a very heavy component. We wanna get it up over the exhaust first. We'll clear our brake lines. And now we finally got it up in here. You can see we had a lot of marks there up against our exhaust. We really had to pull down hard on the exhaust in order to get it to clear, so you may want to consider taking a hanger loose. But we're just staging it here, seeing that it fits through the hole, everything looks good. Now we'll set it up on top of our fuel tank and our exhaust to hold it up in there for us. We'll now take our rear rail and slide it into place. 
The holes are gonna be offset a little bit to one side. So this hole here is a little bit closer to the bottom and that's how we want it when it's sitting in there. It'll sit on top of our rails just like this with the holes offset towards the bottom. To get it in place though, we are gonna to have to put it in sideways. So we'll have to flip it up once we get it in there. And we may have to get underneath there to finish pulling it the rest of the way across. And here underneath, we can just finish sliding it into place. You may have to tap it with a, a little mallet to get it in there. And now we're gonna rotate it to have our holes offset towards the bottom. So we're gonna be tipping it this direction. And it's gonna be pretty hard to do that by hand because it wants to hit. So we're gonna use an adjustable wrench here, slide it on here, and that'll give us the leverage we need to rotate it into position. We'll then just slide that back towards the rear. And now we can try to get our center section attached to our front rail. Now we're gonna slide our pieces together. And this can be the tricky part. You may need an extra set of hands here as well because our rail needs to, our center section needs to pull through the hole. So you have to find it right there. And then we can bring our rail up to it. One of the bolts already be installed. So we just gotta line that up with our hole. And I felt it go in there. So now we're just gonna install our hardware. I'm gonna do the opposite side. Slide one through there, just like that. And while the bolt slid through, I'm gonna place on a lock washer, followed by a nut. And we just wanna make sure we get at least two bolts like this started and to ensure that it holds our hitch up there. Now we're gonna push it in the hole and we're gonna take the longer bolts that come in our kit. These are gonna get a flat washer and a lock washer. We're gonna thread it through our hitch and into our rear rail. You have to slide your rail back and forth until you get it to line up with the hole. And then we can get it started in there. Once you get one started on this, on this side, that'll hold your center section up inside the hole. And we can now repeat those processes to get all the bolts installed on our front rail and all the ones here on our rear, rear rail. Next, we're gonna need to feed in our hardware for our side plates. You're gonna have two of these handle type brackets You'll have a short one and a long one. They're both going to get the larger bolts that come in your kit. These are the bigger 5 8 bolts. We're gonna thread it into here. And you may or may not need a wrench to thread it into here. It looks like I'm probably gonna need a wrench because it is designed to be a tight fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that wrench and we'll tighten it down and the head of our bolt should line up inside those little V grooves there. We'll just tighten it down. You do want to be careful if you're using a, a powered tool. That's why I've got it against the tire here too, because if this tool grabs and you can't hold it, it's going to fling this thing around and you could hurt yourself. So I'm going slowly and I'm bracing it. So we get right there to the end and we're not quite all the way down yet. Get another twist or two out of it there. There we go. And that's what we're looking for. We're nice down in the grooves, it's gonna prevent it from spinning. So that's what we want. And we wanted it to be at this angle because this one here is gonna go through the opening here and then pop out the hole right there. We're gonna go ahead and thread our bolt in, our other handle nut here. This handle nut here, we're gonna be threading it in the other direction because you can see here the uh, grooves, that's always going to be the head of the bolt's going to fit into those grooves. And then we'll head into the inside of the frame after we get that bolt in and we'll push that into place. It's going to come out of this hole right here. So in relation, this is the rear hole and that's the front hole that we just put in. So we'll meet you underneath for our access hole to be able to feed it in there. So here we are now underneath the vehicle. We're just on the other side of the frame from where we'd fed in the other bolt. Here's the jounce bumper for kind of relation of where we're at. And if we go straight up from the jounce bumper, you'll see a big old hole there. That's our access hole. So we'll feed our bolt in there. And then we need to bring it towards the rear and then angle it until it comes out that hole that was uh, on the other side of the frame that we pointed out. It can be difficult to find that hole. 
So just kind of take your time and slide it around there until you line up with it. And it is just a back and forth motion until you find it. So it is kind of a difficult hole to line up with. You have to bring it up to the top there. But we've got it to pass through, so we are good to go there. We'll now put our side plate on. We're back outside, the outside of the frame of the tire here. This is our side bracket. They are side specific. We want the angled section here to be towards the front of the vehicle and just the flat part here to go towards the rear. These two angled sections should fit between the rails that we put uh, slid in earlier. So it's gonna be between this rail and the rear rail. The rear rails here is kind of hard to see because of the uh, liner in the way, but it's about right where my finger is here. So it's gonna go between those two rails. So we're gonna first just kind of slide it around, being careful not to push our bolts back into the frame there, get it to line up on top of those. And then we'll put our hardware on there now. That's gonna be a flat washer, followed by a lock washer, and finally a nut. Now we can attach our side plate to our cross braces that we put into place. So these are gonna be the same size bolts that we used on our front rail here, the shorter, smaller bolts. So this is gonna slide from the front towards the rear. We may have to slide your center section around just a little bit to get it all to line up. That's why we left all of our hardware loose. After it slides through, we're gonna finish up this one with a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. And then this is for attaching it to the front rail. To attach it to the rear rail, we're gonna be using the same hardware except for no nut because the rear rail is threaded. So we're just gonna take our lock washer and our flat washer, place it on the bolt, and then we'll go through our rail, our side plate and thread it into our rail. Once we get our side plate loosely installed, we'll do the same thing over on the other side. We can now go back and tighten down our hardware. We're gonna start with the center section bolts here. So we'll go ahead and tighten these down. We're gonna use a three quarter inch socket and wrench to do so. And then we'll tighten down the bolts on the other side of our center section. We also use a three quarter socket for this. Now the one bolt that goes into your rear cross member by your handle spring here, you're probably going to have to do with a wrench due to clearance issues. Once we got our center section bolts tightened down, we can come over to tighten down our side plates. But before you do that, you want to make sure that it's even side to side. So here's our rear cross member here, and then this is the cross member on the truck. If you stick your finger up in here, you can feel kind of the gap. And then we check the other side and make sure the gap's about the same. So I've already adjusted it now to where I'm equal on each side. So we've got it where we want it. So now we'll just tighten down the side hardware here. So since we know where we want it, we're gonna go ahead and zip these down. We'll use a 15 16 for our larger bolts here. And we'll switch back to our three quarter inch for the two that connect our side plate to our cross beams. We can now go back and torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. <clears throat> Next, we're gonna install our handle, but due to the fender liner on this vehicle, our handle's not gonna fit. It uh, slides in up through this opening located here. So we're actually gonna cut out a section of this just like we did on the other side to, in order to be able to feed our handle in place. You can see your opening right behind it so you can get an idea of where you'll need to cut. And then we're just gonna put our snips in there and we're just gonna trim this out. is able to slide through now so we'll then slide it into place and then we're gonna head underneath so we can attach it so here we've got our handle and this is where it'll attach to this uh, the spring-loaded mechanism here on our center section 
You can see it's got a square hole in the center section, so we're going to use the small carriage bolt that comes in our kit. It'll slide through the center section. Then your handle will slide on the other side. And then we're just going to secure it with the flange nut that comes included with our kit. And then we'll snug it down with a half inch socket. Now we'll take a half inch drill bit and we're going to use the holes in our center section as a template to drill out the four holes for our safety chain attachments. I'm just going to run these right up through the bed. And we're just going to repeat that for the three remaining holes. And here we are again up top. We've drilled those out. We're going to hit these with a little bit of clear coat as well, just to protect these. After you got those clear coated, you can take the U-bolts that come in your kit, and they should drop down in there. Now, sometimes it is going to be a little tight. This one here is a little tight. So we'll just take our drill bit, and we'll kind of just hit it at a little bit of an angle to widen it up just a little bit. We'll check the fit there. That looks much better. So then we'll just get this out of the way. We'll put a little bit of fresh clear coat on it and then we'll drop that one down. We're now back down below. We're gonna take the springs that come in our kit, put the wider end up towards your center section. And then we'll just push that up on there and thread one of the nuts that come in your kit into place. Once we get that one on there, we're going to take another spring and another nut. We're going to slide it over the other side and secure it as well. Once we get this side secured over here, we'll take the spring and nut for the other U-bolt and put those in place also. We'll then go back with our three quarter inch socket and we're going to tighten these down. And we tighten that one a little bit too far. We really don't need these to be very tight. These really just need to be tightened until you got about a thread showing through there. That's about where you want it. And just like that there. So now we'll tighten the other side the same way. And there's our hitch. We've got it fully installed. Everything's tightened down. All that's really left at this point is to put your ball in place if you want to. You simply just pull your lever to open it up to unlock it. And your ball will drop right down in there and then just release your lever to lock it in place. If you're not planning on using your ball right now, you could store it upside down in the storage position like that. And then again, just release your lever to lock it into place. And that completes our installation of B&W's underbed gooseneck hitch on our 2012 GMC Sierra 2500.